It's Wednesday, December 19th, 2012. I'm Rim. I'm Scott. And this is Geek Nights. Tonight, holy shit, we do a Wednesday episode about, well, you'll find out. You're not even going to, you could have just said, you know, winter anime chart 2012, you know 2013. What? We're judging anime solely by the covers. Let's, Let's do this. So last night, uh, me and Scott and Emily went to see The Hobbit, and it was awesome. And all I have to say is, all the people who said that 48 FPS is super unnerving and weird in Benny Hill, nah, no, nah, it's pretty much the best thing ever. Oh, I mean, you know. There were moments where the, a few shots looked odd, but I'm pretty sure those few shots, it was not the 48 FPS. It was the Ultra HD and the really stark 3D combined that made the, the effects look weird in the background. It's hard to tell. I know? also found two separate studies that showed that children who are not exper- like who haven't seen many movies in the theater don't notice anything weird about 48 FPS at all. Oh, that makes sense. And I have an anecdotal evidence from when I was a kid, right? I had one of the first like multimedia CD-driven games on my PC when I bought my multimedia PC with a 2X CD-ROM. I had 4X CD. I know you did. <laughs> well, because I had a 486SX because I didn't I know better back DX then. I had 400, 100 megahertz, a whole extra digit, an order of magnitude more megahertz than anyone else had. My 486SX2... Fuck the SX. I also started with 8 megs of RAM and upgraded to 16, so I actually... I started with 4 and spent several hundred dollars to get up to 8. So I had 16. I didn't need to use boot disks anymore. So I had a game called Tex Murphy Under a Killing Moon. I know that game. Yep. And I had another game. I had a demo of that. Phantasmagoria. Did not have that, but (laughs) That I know know it. That game came on 7 CDs. Yep. So... And that game had a thing where if you had multiple CD-ROM drives, you could put all the discs in at the same time. <laughs> and it had this whole screen to configure that and everything. But anyway, so that the, move, the games had cutscenes. And it had a mode, if your computer sucked, which was pretty much every computer, where it would basically display video where every other scan line was just a black bar. So it was black bar, video, black bar, video. Yep. To have the resolution it had to display so it could actually display it at a reasonable... It was like 320 by 200 anyway. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and I remember when I finally got a computer fast enough to turn that off, the video looked really weird to me. Mm. And that was just because I was used to the previous shittier format. Okay. But uh, the moral, uh, 48 FPS is the future, and anyone who can't deal with it really is just going to have to. Well, I only, I don't know, the only thing I would disagree with you on is that, you know, saying it's the future, implying that, you know, everyone should use it for everything. It's well, like, there are, well, the thing it's is, like, it's, every, it's like saying, everything, everything new in the cinema, I feel like, should be projected digitally with 48 FPS if it can be filmed in that manner. Now, I know there'll be a long period where not every it's not worth it to spend the extra money to be able to film in that capacity or render in that capacity, but I'm pretty much not going to theaters ever that don't use digital projection and project in the format the movie was shot in. Well, of course, yeah. But that's just obvious. Of course, you always see a movie the way it was shot. But I'm saying is that, you know, it's an artistic decision, right? Because is it, does, it, it, it does look different. It is not identical. However, so you I, would may, argue that, I would argue that you it's, may want your movie to look a different way. I argue as you that's might the use, same. That's the same. There's a good example and a bad example, which is why I'm not 100 percent disagreeing with you. The good example would be when Alfred Hitchcock decided to film Psycho or Psycho in black and white, even though color was available because he mm-hmm. thought it suited the movie better. Exactly. The other example is when people add bullshit film grain to their digital movie after the fact. A uh, good example, yes. So yes, those are good for effects, but for an average movie, I don't think using archaic technology is a good idea. Oh well, no, yeah. But the other thing is, even if you want your movie to look different. The projectors in the movie theaters should run at the highest frame rate. And if you want your frame rate to be decreased, just double up all the frames. If you want it to be 24 FPS, just no. To get that up. film effect, you'd have to project basically black. Like you'd have to black it out between them. I don't know. But you just shed the same frame twice, then the same frame twice. I guess it depends. Remember, though, with film, the part of that was that there was the delay between each frame getting in front of the lens. Mm-hmm. 
Anyway, uh, anyway, the what 40 FPS <laughs> is not what made the movie look weird to some people. It was the fact that it was so HD and so 3D that some of the CG effects mm. were. It was obvious they needed another render pass. Yeah, well, no, I think the the biggest thing for me that you also know. a few of the costumes would occasionally you'd see like, yeah, that is obviously a costume. Look how blocky that piece of supposed metal yeah. is. The only visual thing, you know, since that seems to be the controversial aspect. Uh, that bothered me in the movie was that some of the shots that were sort of distant from small from the small people far away, which there are a lot of, right? Uh -huh. Like, like, oh, look at those small guys all the way in that distance, uh, you know, over yonder on the mountain, running across the mountain. Oh, look at those people over there running across a wooden bridge. They're like, you know, tiny little guys all the way over there. Yep. A lot of those shots looked tilt shifted because of the combination of the 3D and the, ah, I mm. think that was primarily but it the wasn't 3D. like a hundred percent tilt shifted it was like slightly tilt shifted because what I what I noticed was that the the 3D was very well done but most of the scenes well not most but a lot of the scenes Everything, no matter what layer it was at, was in stark focus. That is, I noticed that as well. Which was actually pretty awesome looking. It was very looking. rare that anything on screen was not in like almost complete focus. It was all very. I think once there was like a scene of someone's face and like the forest in the background was a little mm. blurry. Yeah, but I guess I will say that in general, I mean, my whole life I've hated film grain. I hated those artifacts just appearing in my movies, and. The flicker of film in cinema always bothered me. Mm. I always, like, I noticed and just it really bothered me the, like, flickering you'd well, see. It bothers me when it's during the movie, but it's like, you know, if you have. Oh, yeah, if the movie's if it's good, like, you if it's that little it thing at the beginning in. of the movie where you put the name of your company, yeah. it's okay to be like, you know, that's your tick, 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 tick. You know? <laughs> but I just, I didn't like that. And I really enjoy the fact that this movie was so smooth, and I, that's why I really want other movies to be just smooth like that. It looked like just a perfect digital panel with none of the artifacts I used to expect from film. Yeah, I mean, why would you want to watch damaged goods? I know. But, there but, actually was, did you notice, there was like a hole in the screen or something in the bottom right Yes, area? oh my God, I was staring at that for like the first <laughs> five minutes of the movie until I forgot about it. I forgot about it when the dwarves showed up. Mm -hmm. Because by the time they showed up, dwarves. those... Dwarves. My God, those dwarves. All right, so... So th mm -hmm. this was a segue. Okay, Because great. I went to the uh, film festival. He's uh, on a roll, he can't shut up. <laughs> it's, it's a geek bite. Okay. Because it's anime day. I, uh, I went with Emily and randomly with our friend Chase and some other people. You know, it's weird. It's a city of so many millions of people. And yet I'll run into like friends randomly just walking around in the streets to su with such a frequency. Well, I mean, you're, if they're your friends, you likely have things in common. It seems you're likely to well, go to the like same places at the same time. Whenever you and me go time. to see an anime movie in the city, no matter what theater it's in, no matter what day when, it's like the same 20 assholes. <laughs> it's, the same, it's the anime fans of New York City. They I know. show up at the anime things. There's only like 20 of us. I know all of you by face and like one or two of you by name. <laughs> but uh, I went to see Mononoke Hime. But we've seen that like... Uh, 12 years ago. Yeah, I haven't seen it in 12 years, and it was in the theater, oh, okay. and I really liked that movie, and I hadn't seen it in a long time, so movie. went and saw it in the theater. And one, the print was mad old, so the whole movie, I just watched the film grain, like, dancing around, uh, and it distracted me the entire time. it was time. probably a real film from the year 2000, and not, say, a video on a hard drive. And it was subtitled, so it had those kind of cool pre-digital like, oh, those subtitle sub yellow subtitles that were on the film itself yeah and they, they looked really cool actually like yeah. kind, of, kind of like how ghost in the shell like the the subtitles in the ghost in the shell on the vhs yeah looked so good compared to the subtitles on the dvd because mm -hmm. they were a different font and everything yep but uh mononoke hime if you haven't ever watched it and i know you might think why would you even question that i haven't watched it remember most people haven't seen most anime what the how could you not have seen uh yeah, I'll bet in Anime Boston, Scott, let, right now, let's ask the audience of one of our panels how many of them have seen Princess Mononoke. I bet less than half. I know people who have never seen an anime in their lives. In fact, here's a story about Princess Mononoke that's interesting, right? All right. I had not yet seen Princess Mononoke uh, at the moment it came out. I think I saw it some months later, right? We showed it at RIT Anime in the theater. That, that is, I saw it at that time, but I believe I also saw it in VHS prior to that time. Uh -huh. uh, and I was in Israel, so I wasn't even at RIT yet. It was the summer of the year 2000. I was in Israel, right? And I was, you know, I knew animes. I had watched Robotech. I had watched, you know, Galaxy Express on Sci-Fi Channel, right? I had watched Akira. I was in the anime scene, right? But I wasn't as big as I was going to be. I didn't know Evangelion existed, right? Things like that. 
And I was in Israel, and one of the guys in the trip with me, his name was actually Ruben, and my name was Scott Ruben. <laughs> uh, and we were talking about anime in the back of our little, you know, group bus. And he's like, oh, th- I saw this thing, Princess Mononoke. It was amazing. And I'm like, I've never heard of that. I'll have to check that shit out. And we were in a movie theater. Uh, we were in, basically, there was a shopping mall next to a beach, and the beach was full of jellyfish. So we were alternating between Yar. we were alternating between the sand and the mall because the water was jellyfish. He got, actually got stung. And in that mall, there was a movie theater that had the movie playing, and I saw the poster there, and I was like, whoa, that's probably got like Hebrew subtitles or some shit, right? I did not see it then, but because I saw the poster... Right, that was the thing that you know made me remember, and that's why I saw it in the VHS Not bad. when I get back. So, Scott, I will bet you fifty dollars. Pick any one of the panels we but, do oh, at Anime Boston. But anyway, the original point I was making is that. Even some guy named Ruben, who was not a super anime fan in, in Israel, had seen this freaking movie. Oh, yeah. Right? I'm... For an anime fan, a self-described anime fan, to have not seen it, what the fuck? And he, yeah, saw, you know it, he not... saw it before me when it came out in the year 2000. So you're an anime fan, you say you're an anime fan, and you haven't? What the fuck? So the moral is, watching that movie again, that movie is amazing. Well, yeah. Duh. So... I'm watching it again. I just, I love that movie so much and it's super good. Yeah. You should all watch it. <laughs> and I don't have anything else to say other than how awesome that movie Captain is. Captain Obvious. I see him outside on the bridge. Hey, geek Bite. Not everyone listens to every Wednesday show. He's got binoculars. He's looking at you. He's checking, he's checking to see if he needs to save you. It's also interesting. I'm waving him off. Because of all the Miyazaki movies, that one is like the peak of Miyazaki-ness. Uh, I think Spirited Away was the peak of Miyazaki-ness. Uh, Spirited Away, though, was a little less of the man, nature, environmental stuff. What are you talking about? The communist grandma in the woods? That was there, but that was a little less. Okay. Mononoke is the direct battle between the gods of the forest, the, the old world order, the humans, the... the. Okay. It's so direct. It's not even a metaphor. It's just literally, let's fight about it. Oh, right, sure. So, anyone who hasn't been living under a rock should know about War Z. So, I only learned about it because someone a few days ago tweeted something about, hey, check out this bullshit game. So, here, I can't get, I don't know what the whole. So here's the information I've heard from people versus the information I've... Uh, All get, right, because re- there was an update today. So you know that there is a game called Daisy, which is a mod for Arma 2, yep. right? And I've learned a lot about that game from my coworker who's playing it a lot. He's sort of obsessed with it, right? Yeah. To the point of coding tools for it. So um, apparently there was another game called War Z, and from what he told me, so this is just someone told me, right, is that War Z came out as a game a long time ago, and it sort of... Right, no one played that shit. Right, so it sort of died, and then uh, when you know Arma Two, someone decided to make a mod for Arma Two that was sort of what War Z was called Daisy, and that became actually popular. So yeah, this is interesting because someone relating the story on a blog that I read said basically the opposite order of events. Oh, uh, okay. I don't know. I haven't. I've done I don't no know. research. This is, this, on this is the part I don't know. I'm just saying what I've heard. But that would be sort of like the equivalent of. If Counter Strike had tried to come out as its own game and died on the vine, and then Counter Strike the Half Life mod came out and succeeded <laughs> and took over the world. But anyway, so now here's definitely the true parts, right? The parts we know for sure. There's a game called War Z that appeared on Steam and it went straight up to the top, and people were buying it like crazy. And we're like, whoa. There's a moral here. Remember what, just, what we just said, and I'll get back to it. There's yeah. a moral. How did that happen? Like, why, you know, this is obviously just some knockoff game. I mean, we knew that the Daisy people were working and supposedly are working on a standalone version uh, that they'll sell, presumably. But this is not it. This is War Z, some knockoff, and it just appeared on Steam and tons of people were buying it. And it's like, why are people buying an uh, obvious wait, 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 knockoff wait, wait, piece of shit? Wait, wait, wait. So you're questioning the same class of people who put money down for the ooh Oh, and the same and the people who, who don't read the internet and don't realize what the fuck shit is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The people are like, oh shit, zombies. How many people paid money for this and didn't still don't know all the bullshit? Zombies. Yeah. So here's the deal. This game went on Steam. And Wait, why do we make a Steam game that's steampunk zombies? Yeah. And unlike the Apple Store, right? You know, the Apple iOS App Store where you know, Apple verifies everything you put in there. 
Steam doesn't seem to do too much of that, right? They let games go on there that are crashy as fuck. They don't care. They let game, you know, and they just say, you know, they make a deal with you and then your game goes up with very little, uh, you know, supervising by Valve. But they will step in in many situations. They do step in on things, but they just let games go up there without testing them or any. They don't care. I know. I've downloaded some games that just don't run. Yeah, it's bullshit. I paid like a dollar for them, so I don't worry about it. No, but it's still bullshit that you paid any amount of money for something that doesn't work. Yeah. You know, and they don't get. They're very stingy with refunds. So this game went up, and the biggest problem was not that it didn't work, it's that. It was super beta, but they were selling it like it was done a released full game. And so there was a great interview recently. Well, well, well not done yet. And, okay. But in addition, if you looked at the description of the game on Steam, the description was patently false. Like it was basically describing the game as it would exist in the future. But it dis- it the language was such that you would any normal person would hey believe. Hey guys, if you pay us twenty bucks, Geek Nights, <laughs> you'll get the feed yeah. of Geek Nights. It would be like <laughs> listen to Geek Nights, ten years worth of podcasts, and it's like, well, actually, there's only seven years worth of podcasts, and three years they will be worth ten years, maybe. But it, I'd be like, if we said ten years worth of podcasts right now, because we're gonna be around for three more years. You know, it's you can't do that. It's it's false advertising. So it was a big uproar among the people on the internet who are fucking connected and don't belong in our uh, off the grid geeks episode. And they said, "Hey, what the fuck is this bullshit? Right? Not only are you a ripoff, but you're just lying in your game description. That's false advertising." I downloaded this game believing all that, and it's bullshit. I want a refund. Fuck you guys. Or some people were smart enough not to buy it. We're still fuck you guys. And then. The interview Rim was talking about. They interviewed the guy who made this game. So what the? It seems like some shady Russian dude. That interview was just. It, it was kind of amazing. Like you'd expect in a situation like that, the company to either say nothing or give those very like, well, there might be some misunderstandings. We're going to issue an apology, press release, whatever. The guy is just kind of douchey. Yeah, it seemed like definitely a shady Russian guy. He's like, well, the game does technically support up to 100 people. We just only capped it at 50 currently. And he's like, then the interview is like, well, why did you say up to 100 then if it actually does only go up to 50? (laughs) <laughs> well, it could go up to 100. We just set it at 50. And this is when the interview got great. If you got then a the private guy's like, server, you could make it 100 The guy's like, well, then to. why didn't you just say it could go up to a million? Yeah. <laughs> 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 anyway, so the, it's obviously you shouldn't pay any money for this game or play it or give a shit about it. But it caused this uproar on Steam to the point at which Valve pulled it off of Steam. So it's not, you can still go to the page for it. You just can't buy it. And I guess they are giving someone refunds, which is a huge deal because Steam almost never gives refunds ever, right? Almost never. So hopefully, you know, this will lead to a better deal on Steam where Valve actually fucking checks shit out before it lets games go up. But it shows you this sort of, you know, dual, you know, catch-22 situation that these digital software stores have, right? If they do what the Android store does... Or what Steam was doing, just let shit go up there. People complain. You let malware in the store. There was false advertising on this item. I downloaded this shit. It didn't work. I want a refund on this. This bullshit is not what I thought it was going to be, right? But if you filter everything like Apple does, then you get all these other complaints. They won't let me sell my shit in their store. They're being all restrictive, not letting me do... I get a freedom. Charging too much money, taking, you know, and it's like... What do you, is really only t- what can you think of a third option? You either filter the things that go in the store or you don't. I mean, yep. What do and you, you know <laughs> what? Steve Valve kind of takes the best take. They generally let it go, but they step in either yeah. to they should allow you to get a refund on anything that you haven't significantly played by just taking it out of your account and giving you your fucking money back, right? Obviously, and they know how many hours you've played everything too. So it's like if I download something, start it, and it crashes and doesn't work, and I want a refund. It's trivial for them to tell that, no, I haven't actually played this game and I just want my money back, right? And uh, two, they should look at the games before they allow them to go in the store on sale 
And if there's like, you know, obviously if no game is perfect. Any software in the world is going to be have bugs. It is not, you don't have to demand it to be 100% perfect like a Nintendo game is where the millions of dollars in testing that most game studios, especially indie studios, can't afford. But you should make sure it's not fucking crashing for like half the players. Like if you look at the threads for a lot of games, you know, they, they just fucking don't work. You know, Hotline Miami was broken. It's working now. You know, Magicka, the fucking network didn't, st- I don't think it still works. You know, um, what was it? Uh, Multi Winia was that the one? Oh yeah, Multi Winia. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't Steam's fault though. But you know, there have been multiple cases of games just don't fucking work, and Valve, you know, should not let those go up until it has verified that they work to a reasonable extent. So. Uh, Anime Boston, you know, we're going to be there doing our usual panel stuff. We're not going to... That's s- a ways off. Yeah, and we're not going to... Why are you talking about this? And well, not the one, because panel submissions... It's not the meta moment. Why are you talking about it? One, because panel submissions end at the end of January. Okay, that's so meta was- moment still. Okay, keep going. How's that meta moment? I'm not talking about us being there in that context. <laughs> right. But uh, I was perusing the website looking for anime news. I just ended up on the Anime Boston site. Why would there be anime news on the Anime Boston site? I went to the Anime Boston site to see if they'd announced anything because, you know. Oh, I guess, yeah, maybe if there was a guest announcement. That'd and be there okay. were some, but then I noticed something. And I think this says something about the kinds of people who go to anime conventions and the perceptions about them that I find kind of funny. And I'm just going to let it stand as is. This Anime Boston has a very extensive tipping guide for how much you should tip people at a hotel. Uh, anime fans don't tip people at a hotel because even if they know they should, they don't have any fucking money. Restaurants, bars, the doorman, the bellman, room service, housekeeping, how much money to leave all of these people. So I want to go through this list. Restaurants, yeah, I tip. Bars, I don't tip if I get just beer. Mm-hmm. Nor yeah, do they, I tip if my only cocktails tip, suck. I don't drink, right? But if I did, I know that you should only tip a bartender if they prepare you a drink. If they simply pour a beverage, like they grab the soda fountain thing and push the soda button or the water button, or if they just take a beer and open it and put it on the counter, they don't get any money for that, no, right? No, if they pour they my get beer money. with a proper head, yes, I'll give them a, a couple dollar or two. Yeah, maybe, but you know. Or like, if they make my cocktail, but again. Or if they like, you know. but If, it's the, like, if the cocktail sucks, even if I'm ordering if they get more it of them, wrong, no more tips. Yeah, if you get it wrong, you don't get any fucking money, right? And, uh, and if, but if you're sitting there mixing stuff together with ice and shaking it and pouring it and you know, then you get money. But I have to say, in general, my experience at bars in or near anime con hotels has been that the service has been so shitty that I've generally just given up on tipping. Right, but if you were some anime, you, you had to know that the service was shitty. Yeah, well, I usually find out. Yeah. Yeah, so they always get one tip out of me, the first drink I get. And mm-hmm. then room service? Yeah, I don't tip room service. I do not tip room service either. Bellmen, because I the price their is, services, and if they do it anyway, I don't tip them. That is also true, but How, yeah, the room service is so expensive, right, that it doesn't get a yep. tip. Housekeeping, I really don't tip. Concierge, I don't tip. Uh, front desk, I don't tip. Though they say don't tip the front desk, so that's okay. Okay. Maintenance, it says don't tip maintenance. I don't Of course tip not. Why would you even need to put that there? Uh, if you request an item like a pillow, an iron, a fridge, a rollaway bed, a general guide is $1 to $2 for small items, 3 to $5 for large items. No. That person is supposed to bring you that shit. That's part of the money you paid for the hotel room. Now, I, I hate tipping. It's a separate thing, but I just find it funny that this anime con has a guide for its attendees on, hey, you should really tip people. I wonder who decided to put this guide here. What drove that? Did the hotel be like, look, did some uh, like bartender be like, look, is it just some well-meaning person inside of Anime Boston? I'm really curious. Yeah, it might have been, you know, some hotel people were like, yeah, fuck these anime cons. We don't make any fucking money when they show up. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, poor ass high uh, school kids cramming themselves into rooms I'm making trouble for a, us. I'm referencing a story from pre Geek Nights. I don't know if we've ever talked about it on the show, but uh, I'll quote it. And if people don't know this anecdote, I'll tell it on another show. Okay. They're not as bad as those young Republicans. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Things of the day. So I did not watch The Dark Knight Rises because I didn't like The Batman Begins. And I basically just haven't liked any Batman movie that wasn't animated since Michael Keaton played Batman. (laughs) Really, I just don't like these movies. Me either. But 
Dark Knight Rises, I'd heard a few good things about, and a lot of people had told me with a straight face that it was a really good Batman movie. The that, same people who said Dark Knight Returns No, was so these great. people said, yeah, Rim, Whatever. I know you didn't like Dark Knight Returns, but Dark Knight Rises is way better. Or the Dark Knight, I guess. It's not Dark Knight Returns, right? Yeah, it's the Dark Whatever. Knight Rises is the new one. They said Dark Knight Rises fixes all those problems, is more of a Batman movie, and to all the people who tried to get me to watch that movie... I dare you to tell me that what I'm about to link to is not, in fact, the god-awful truth. Yeah, I This is an honest trailer about this movie. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, someone who went through the trouble to make this honest trailer, I'm inclined to believe them. So this is my thing. Even though I don't know if they're lying or not because I haven't seen it, nor am I likely to see it soon. I dare anyone to tell me that this is not the truth. (laughs) You got a thing of the day? I do. Captain? So, you know, you and I, we know, right, that... We've had this common experience of, yeah, the people you went to high school with. Mm. A few people mm. survived and made well for themselves, and they're in our forum. But, but it seems that any given high school is going to have a few awesome people and everyone else. Yep. I mean, it's <laughs> telling that I look on LinkedIn and basically no one from my high school is there. So this is this is a YouTube channel named Animation Domination High Def. I think it's related to... Uh, animation domination as in the block of cartoons on Fox, which includes Family Guy Simpsons. But this is a Charlie Brown Christmas reunion. <laughs> and it's basically the concept here is Charlie Brown is moved to the city when he grew up and became an awesome person like us, basically the same person as us. <laughs> and he goes back to, I guess, the Peanuts town to see how things are doing around Christmas time. And all the other p- kids, are, uh, <laughs> and he goes to check them out, and then, uh, you know, it's like, wow, okay. <laughs> so uh, I can really identify with this video, uh, and if you are a successful person who moved to a city that is definitely New York, because you see him riding the subway, then you will also identify with this video, and you should watch it. If you are the kind of person who is... Uh, you know, that person who failed in high school, or maybe you despise people like us. Why are you listening? And <laughs> uh, you will not like this video because it's making fun of you. Scott, there's a Thursday show. <laughs> what? How to not be those guys. Move to the city like Charlie Brown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the there's, end. there's one little scene in this where Charlie Brown like goes to a, a typical New York pizza place and the little moment where he folds up his little uh, plate and sticks it in the garbage just really, really evoked New York City for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, like that yeah. moment, because I had that moment today yeah. and three days ago. I almost had the moment today, but I chose salad over pizza. In fact, the guys in my one pizza place now know me, and they're always, they're always just give me the same thing. They don't even ask. Uh, I walk in. For me, it's the breakfast guy knows me. I just walk in, and there's a bacon, egg, and cheese I'm on looking for a new bagel. breakfast guy, because my last breakfast guy got shut down for mouse poop. Uh, my guys, they do have mouse poop, but they still have a B. I think they might get it turned around to an A pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> I think they actually have mice's, but not mouse poops. In the meta moment, the book club book is The Great Gatsby. We've got a bunch of stuff on the internet. MAGFest is coming up in short order. We will be there drinking and playing games. And because it's Wednesday, we launched a new show called Geek Nights Presents, where we're talking about Shoujo Kakame Utena in a sort of uh, analytical review. It'll be between 30 and, I don't know, 50 episodes, but... It's popular, but not popular enough. So if you want us to do it faster, or if you like it, then you got to spread the word. You got to get it on your Reddits and your Tumblers and all those things, because the more it gets around, the faster we're going to upload episodes. And we have already recorded episodes, but we are not uploading them. We are going slowly, unless you guys spread the word. So if you like it, get other people to like it. Get that view count up. Because we will not shamelessly self-promote ourselves, but it's totally okay if you do it. It is often said you should not judge a book by the cover, and that is true. Look at how many books we got where it's a really good book and the cover is shit. Prince of Nothing volumes with the faces. Ugh, yeah, yeah. Right? And there are often books. The, granted, the originals had much better covers. Right. There are often also, well, there's also a newer cover that's better as well. Yeah. Uh, there are also often books with awesome covers, and they fucking suck. I've seen Bibles with awesome covers, right? So, or, you know, the really awesome styling. Maybe they're illuminated, Ooh, right? But they, they suck. So, you know, you can't judge some by the first appearance. It's called prejudice, prejudice, judging before you know. And that is a bad thing that we do not like. However, s- while that rule still holds true when it comes to the world of anime and manga, 
it just so happens, statistically speaking, that when you do judge an anime by its cover, at least when I do, or you do, or Daryl Surratt does, or Emily <laughs> does, that 99%... Oh, I hit myself with the microphone. 99% <laughs> of the time... We just happen to be right. It's not some general rule that holds true. Obviously, the cover does not, by any you know law of the universe, hold any relation to the qualities or the properties of the thing. It just so happens. It just so that we're no anime well enough that 99% of the time our prejudice happens to be correct. So we have here the famous... Um, Winter 2012-2013 anime chart, the newest anime chart. By Zana. Yeah. Zana. We are going to go down this list. Of, Let's go I, left to right, top to bottom. Yeah. And we are going to judge each and every one of these based on the poor partial JPEG and two paragraphs of text that go with each one. And we'll see how close to 99% correct we get with our completely not true prejudice judgments. So, Boku no Emoto wa Osaka Okan. The anime adapts something, something. I'm not going to read all of these out loud. So, it's a bunch of books, tongue in cheek guide to dealing with people from Osaka. So, it's about Osaka. So, is it is it going to be like racist against people from Osaka? Because they're I sort have of a feeling country it is. people, right? Uh, she spent about a decade living apart from her sister. She's looking forward to reuniting with her sister as they live together again. Okay. Now, th- mm. On the scale, there's no weird boobs. There are no weird boobs here. The yet. character's cute. She's got these single fangs. Single fang is always cute. But yeah. she's not drawn in the like doubly moe forms. No. I think this actually might be a funny show, but I think this is going to be the cute, funny, crunchy roll kind of show. Uh, the my- kind of show that I watch like uh, Nietzsche Joe. Yeah, I think it might be a little bit. It's, it's. I think it'll be like a step under Polar Bear Cafe, right? Because it doesn't have that crazy. Well, weir- you know, my only worry with this show is that I don't know enough about stereotypes of Osaka. I know that they're basically hicks, right? It's. It's. <laughs> it's, it's. Yeah, but I don't know it's the like details. Southern yokel. I don't know either. Like the so, other day, Emily and I were watching some anime, and she's laughing hysterically. Th- and no, you don't know why. we were both. There was this exchange of dialogue that, at after it happened, we're like. I think that was a joke. And she's like, yeah, but I don't even get it. And we're like, what? And we rewind it and it still doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay, maybe the subtitle. No, she doesn't need the subtitle. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. But yeah, uh, it could be one of those ones where it, it it's, it's too show I- far out there. But then again, you get like a Gog Manga VRE, which we get, even though it makes those kinds of really have to be Japanese jokes. So far, this is the best show I've seen on this list. <laughs> Great. No matter what the first show was, it would have been the best show you see. Okay. <laughs> Next, Saki Achiga Hen, episode of Side A. Last that already looks like it's going to be weird and perverted. Last episode of the series. Oh, it says Mahjong Powerhouse, Elementary Sachi Girls Transfers, and Television Falling Years, National Mills, and Mahjong Chance. So this is cute schoolgirls playing Mahjong. So. On the one hand, this is going to be a good because it's sort of like a Mahjong show, and I love those sports action shows, but it looks like one of those ones where they're combining Moe with the sports to get the double hit. And in that sense, this is something to avoid because you can just watch an awesome Mahjong show instead of watching this slightly, obviously trying to be perverted Mahjong show. Like, what was that, you know, uh, training with whatever her name is? Oh, that, yeah. It was like, yeah, exercise and look at crotch and boob shots at the same time. This doesn't look from this JPEG to be that perverted. It just, but it, clearly, why would you need cute schoolgirls playing Mahjong? It's a show I wouldn't even notice. So, yeah. Savannah Game. I guess we're going to alternate here, right? A young man follows a blah, blah, blah. Anonymous message. All right. So it's some kind of bloody, serious mystery show. Oh, this is one of those situational things like nine doors, nine persons, or nine that, hours. Or uh, that the darker than black. Or battle royale. Yeah. Yeah, there's bizarre rules that span the space. So it's a supernatural. Well, no, so Darker Than Black wasn't that. It was the other one of let's introduce this particular kind of mystery that is that has a particular set of rules around it that seems to occur primarily in anime and manga. Yeah, so this is create a scenario with a set of rules constraining the characters so that they're forced into a horrible situation they need to escape All right, from. they find themselves in bizarre like, battles that span the space-time continuum right, they're from mixing in, the Shinsengumi. They're mixing in the supernatural battling with the situational Death Note kind of thing together. The uh, character it's designs based look on okay. A, it's based on a novel. This, you know, could be good, but I have a feeling this is going to be a lot more like... Oh, what's that one where the guy shows up naked in front of the White House? 
Oh, Eden of the East? It's going to be a lot like Eden of the East. Well, no, if it's Eden of the East, that means every episode is worse than the one that came before it. I think that might be the case. Because I have a feeling what they're doing here, right? It's based on a novel, it says. So it could mirror the novel. But this could also be one of those ones where they try it out and they figure out if the situational side is more popular or the supernatural battling is more popular and end up leaning in one direction or the other. I don't know. Battling everything from ratings. dragons to Shin Sengu, I worry the show just kind of goes dumb. A but, supernatural battle, yeah. But I don't know. I'm ambivalent on it, actually. Yeah, it's it's it. this could go either way. It could be Eden of the East. It could be fucking Death Note. I don't know. Okay. Tante Opera Milky Homes Alternative 2. So this is a sequel to Tante Opera Milky Homes Alternative 1. All right. Uh, I don't think anything with the word milk in the title is ever going to be no. safe to watch. This is apparently schoolgirls who are a Sherlock Holmes team. That's why it's Milky All right, Holmes. The, the girls look, like especially the girl in the middle, they look like characters straight out of, what was that old? Himiko Den. I don't know. I I know the name Himiko Dan. I don't know. So I can't. Himiko Dan had a pretty good opener. I was like, "Ooh, what's this? That show is dumb as shit." Yeah. So this is Detective Schoolgirls. This might be a. Sh it's an original show. This might be for uh, younger kids. I'm guessing based on the picture, right? Doesn't seem like it's super perverted moe. Just you know the cute for younger kids moe. Um, but yeah, I, I don't I don't get the feeling from this that the mystery part, which would be the good part, is going to be as good as say a Detective Conan situation, right? It's it, going to be sort of a a shallow kind of thing. Looking at this picture lined up with any other pictures I've seen of you know similar anime from previous years, interchangeable. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Poochimas, wait a minute, Petite Idol Master. So it's related to Idol Master. It has an interesting sort of aesthetic. So it doesn't Idol look Master like normal is, anime. So Idol Master is sort of the Pokemon of idols, right? Yep. So based on this, though, it looks to be the super deformed version. The overly version. hyper so this is, so this daily is, life of the 765 pro idols of the Idol Master. So this is mini Idol Master. This is Idol Master... Island. Oh, so it's like the Lotus I Island. It's Idol Master character like petite, things. Like, you know, and mini then there Palabor, are, mini no, Pato. no, no, there are Poochie Daughter, which are the like chibi versions of them that are in the same world. Okay. So this is basically Chibi Idol Master. You know what? I'm actually used to be a big fan of all those cute sideshow SD versions of Lotus things. Island is way better than Lotus War. Yeah, exactly, right? So at least TV series. So yeah, why, you know, if I whether Idol Master is good or not, this could be cute, but I think I have a feeling you need to know Idol Master to get the jokes in this. So even though it might be good, I think it might only appeal like, uh, to like, Idol Master like fans. Like a Mini Pato. Exactly. Mini Pato makes no sense if you don't know Pat Labor, but if you do, it's the greatest thing. So I think this is going to be just like that. You need It's a super deformed Idol Master, but you need to be an Idol Master fan already to appreciate its possible goodness. Okay, apparently this next one, I, My, Me, does not look Wasn't like it it's a sequel turn? to I, My, Me, Strawberry Egg. No. So I, My, Me, the story follows girls in a manga club who fight evil invaders blah 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 yeah this seems like it's gonna be moe with a little bit of the el hazard situation because they're in a manga club yeah but the character right? designs oh no and oh a little bit of the maho tsukai situation wait a minute now the one girl has that octopus right it's gonna wait, have that they the other girl appears to have fish tied to her right they're in a manga club there's gonna be that weirdness aspect but it looks like it's mostly that moe supernatural battling aspect and i don't know if the weird octopus in the pot aspect will be enough to bring it into Maho Tsukaitai territory simply because it's modern I distrust it and feel that it's gonna go into the other territory that's not as good so the AKB48 anime next stage so I kind of wanted to watch an episode or two. I just want to read the description of it because oh. it really sets it off. Okay. In the original series, an interplanetary war broke out at the start of the 21st century. Earth's ecosystem was damaged and humanity was forced to flee the planet. In this new society, things that disturb the heart, like music and art, are forbidden. Uh, 48 years later... <laughs> The legendary mm. idol group is resurrected as AKV48, labeled as terrorists. They must take up arms to defend their careers and their fans. This is basically Charles Barkley's Shut Up and Jam Guy Dan. <laughs> So the thing is, AKB48, the, the actual idol group, I, I must say, I am not a fan. I, you know, there are other idol groups that I can understand the appeal of. AKB48 is... They're okay. They is, have music in, uh, in Wreck-It Ralph. I do not like their music uh, that I have heard. There may be a song they've done that I do like that I have not heard yet. And all their music videos I have seen are 
Creepy. Listen to their the uh, Sugar Rush song from uh, Wreck It Ralph. I will do so. You but might any, like it. But I've actually heard that the anime, the first one, which I guess this is a sequel to, was some people liked it. Even people who didn't like AKB48, it got some internet buzz. It didn't. The ex- character designs look okay. So. I'm not sure. This could the be... The girl in the top right is making a really good smile. I like that kind I, of smile. I agree with that. Uh, and I like the girl in the top left who isn't smiling. She's sort of like... <laughs> but She's got a big forehead, You too. know, I, I don't know whether to trust that hype on the internet. And based on my dislike of AKB48 itself... I have a feeling this might be like, you know, one of those meh shows. And this is a sequel to a potentially meh show. So it could, it, it could even be a Gundam Sea Destiny. You don't know. Right? Or Macross 7. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to say meh and move along. All right. So, ore no kanojo to osana, <laughs> osanana jimi ga shura ba sugiru. <laughs> osanana jimi. That's the word. Okay. A young boy called something. He goes to high school. He wants to go and be a doctor at the university school of medicine. His parents divorce and his goal he shuns all romance and love, but the school beauty with the server with the silver hair is way just returns and I guess his way into him and he has to go it's a harem show. It's a harem show. It's a light novel, it's a harem show. Okay. The end harem show next. Minami K Tadaima. The fourth season of Minami K. I know nothing about Minami K. All right, let's see. Looking at these three characters. The bottom left character looks too much like a creepy character from one of those Moe incest shows. I'm assuming this show is also Moe incest, unless proven otherwise. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> okay, Senron Kagura. Look at that JPEG. Those boobs. Something action game ninjas. They all have gigantic tits. Fuck this show next. Wow. Yeah. They're they're like melons. Yeah, and the next. <laughs> and the one girl kind of looks like Monica Magica. Next. That's true. Bakamatsu Ginjden Roman. Oh, Roman, a phantom thief in the Genroku era. Mm. Uh, let's shift the time frame. What? So it's another sequel to something called Bakamatsu, but I guess it takes in a different era. So it's the same show, but in a different t- you know period of history. All right, the no. Genroku uh, era. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, it's based on a pachinko game. Whoa! That actually is kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> now, the I'm, worst I'm, case scenario for this show, I think, is it's a lot like Darker Than Black in that it looks really cool and has a cool thing going. You really going. keep bringing up Darker Than Black, don't because you? Because that was like the archetype of the show that, by all appearances, looks like it'll be awesome, but does this like sort of, we talked about it when we reviewed it, it does this kind of samey craft that makes it completely uninteresting. I think this is going to be one of those ones where it's like, watch one episode and never to watch everything again. Okay. Courtesy of Zetai Karen Children, the unlimited Hyobu Kyosuke. Spinoff of Zetai Karen Children, which I've heard of but never don't know anything about. Wait a minute, one guy's at level seven. The plot summary from the original series is a world where ESP is common. Oh, it's a battling show. Shonen battling show based on a manga. It's going to have fights that are way too long. Everyone is ESPers like Final Fantasy VI. Yeah, no, aside from all and you kids is, don't this know. And this is a sequel, so it's clearly just more battling. If you thought Esper was a cool word from some sort of mythology, no, it literally came from someone who does ESP. ESP. ESPer. Yeah, uh, it's a s- freaking supernatural battling show. Fuck it. Let's yeah, go next. Yeah, it looks one. boring. Yeah. Send you. Looks, I don't know. The character design looks, looks cool. Looks like cute people, cute but not super stuff. cute with some fantasy action. This could be like a rave master. Wait thing. a minute, a demon king returns. You're right. If it's a de- if it's a rave master situation, I don't have any desire I'm to watch it. I'm getting a total rave master vibe here with my prejudice, so I'm writing it off and saying avoid because I don't even see a cute monster that rave master had. Oh, so the king's looking for the descendants of a great hero, and 75 people show up. That's actually not a bad uh, uh, setup. Yeah. We could use that for a burning wheel or something. Oh. <laughs> everyone thinks they're the son of the great king? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thanks for the idea, show. Maybe I'll watch one episode of you as a reward. Uh, Boku wa Tomodachi ga Sukunai next. So it's another sequel. Sequel to it's Boku based wa on a Tomodachi. Novel. Based on a light novel. A half Japanese, half British transfer student is a delinquent. Sullen girl, uh, it's all sundere, soon soon. The two decide yeah. to form a club of misfits with hardly any friends. Uh, this could be at best 
a this seems it's like it's gonna be a, a club for misfits with hardly any friends. This could be uh Haruhi, the not as good version. Yeah. Is the feeling I get. You still need to watch Haruhi. It's I really will good. At some point. Maybe that's okay. It's a good All one. right. Huh. Sasami san Ganbaranai. Well, Sasami san at Ganbaranai with an at symbol. Oh, it's shaft. Okay. And the <laughs> character design looks pretty good. Isn't it looks that like a bad thing well animated. Shaft? It's about Hikikomori who spies on people. Her brother takes care of their, her, even though she despises his slave-like nature. So it's um, definitely, uh, I'm getting a uh, welcome to the NHK vibe here. Only it's a girl who's the Hikikomori, and there's a dude taking care of her. So the fantasy is that you're the dude taking care of the hiki- cute Hikikomori if girl. This is a good who's show, also awesome at hacking. If it's a good show, it'll be because it's more like Wreck. Then, like, I'm trying to think of a good example it's of a show. It's not going to be like, like Wreck. Yeah, you never it's know. It's going to be that fantasy of you have a sister you're taking care of. She's No, hot. I think it's going to focus more on her, and he's just a side character who's despised. Anyway. That's my guess. Here we go. It seems it's going to focus more on her spying on the outside world. Uh, okay, anyway. Uh, but three beautiful sisters and brother relationship comedy. Eh. Yeah. Mondai Jitachi ga Isekai Karakuru So Desu Yo. I like how you're getting the long Japanese name. The story mean- follows. Uh, someone who's bored with the world. Oh, oh I'm an already, envelope I'm shows already up. Getting, Remember that he's creepy, okay. transported eh. to an alternate world with two other problem children who also got envelopes. Uh, they're girls. Uh, what? Yeah, and Scott. Remember that creepy show about Alice in Wonderland that was like rape fantasy with the keys. Yeah, the girl does have bunny ears. She's got cleavage also. I'm getting the same vibe from this picture that I got from that creepy, almost rape show that we reviewed many years ago. But I also get a slight vibe of uh, the show with the horrible murders, but it was the cute Oh, when they cry? Yeah. Getting a little bit of that going on there. I don't think it's that. Okay. I I don't know. The show worries me a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, next. But Bunny Girl. Bunny Girl's not good. Go. Beast Saga. Oh, my God. The face that Lion Man is making on the left is the best face. I want to make that my Twitter icon. So far, this is the best show on the list. I'm making that my Twitter icon as soon as I upload the show tonight. That lion face? That lion face is so great. This gives me the old school vibe. And it's cool because you see, you know, these battling shows. Wait, Scott. they They fight for their honor. Yeah, it's definitely a kid's battling show. But the fact that it's animal people battling, there's only a few shows like that that are actually in this vein. I can only think of maybe like two. And in one of those, it's people who turn into animals to battle. So... Uh, what about the subset of animal robots that are used to fight? That's Transformers Beast Wars. But yeah, I'm getting, like, this would be fun for Lowell's for, like, one or two episodes. Yep, like, Lowell, it's like, take KO Century Beast, but it's not making fun of the genre. It is the genre. <laughs> yeah, right? Okay, <laughs> next. Italia anime, fifth season. You know what? It's Italia. The, the comic end. was really funny. Mm-hmm. I really liked it. Emily translated a shit ton of it back in the day. Yeah. The anime, pretty dumb and poorly done, in my opinion. Well, it's really popular. I know, but so, for not for the reasons it should if be. If you're an Italian fan, watch it. Otherwise, don't. Okay. Yeah. G- G.J. Boo. Short stories about the lives of high school students. So this, this is going to be, be cute. This is a short anime. I always like those. Yeah. But it looks like the high school students are all little chibi girls, so there could be some moe problems. But they could be so chibi that it's actually like chibi show from yeah. the 90s style and, and not creepy moe show it, like Mincho Town. This could be sort of like somewhere in between... Uh, what's the the uh, the animals that are no good? Oh, Damakadobutsu. It could be in between Damakadobutsu and Azumanga Daio. Cute high school girls in a Damakadobutsu kind of way. You need to watch uh, Nichi Joe because I know is, about it. Have you seen it? I've seen an episode. Okay, you should watch more of it. Anyway, you got the next one. DC the third, Da Capo the third. What? All right, this show is shit. I'm not even going to read the description because look at that girl's boobs. I saw the girl boobs coming half a page away. Is that all you're going to say? I'm reading the description. Oh my, yeah, it's even worse. Oh my, God, really? And this is what, a third, the third. So this is related to the De Capo series. So the De Capo series as a whole must just be some perverted mess, right? Those boobs, just there's no way a show with boobs like that is good unless that show is called Slayers. Okay, so Chiha, <laughs> Chihaya Furu <laughs> second season. <laughs> Chihaya Ayase is a Frank and I mean, girl who gets fascinated by Wait, the... Wait, what was that? 
Ebullient? Oh, this is a. This seems to actually. It's Madhouse. This doesn't look too bad. This looks, you know, was similar. We had the high school girls playing the Mahjong. character design. Reminds me of Child's Toy. Yeah. So the other one was looked like reason. perverted girls playing Mahjong, like some fantasy for Yakuza and high school girls. Right. This one actually looks like it Emily's might, giving the show the thumbs up. Right. This looks to me like a Yawara fashionable judo girl, except yeah. that it's Yawara fashionable card playing girl. Emily is like nodding and thumbs upping everything we're saying. So yeah, I'll watch I mean, this. you could tell just by the the character design of the girl that it's not going to be the perverted kind. That it's actually about. The card playing, the same way that Hikaru no Go is about Go, only this girl is the main character, right? So, all right, we'll watch so, that. So, yeah, I'm actually, I'm going to put that on the list. That may even be the best one so far, possibly. Hakinden, Toho, Anyway, Hakinibun? it says second season, so we can actually go watch the Chihaya Furu, <laughs> Chihaya Furu first season if we want. So, Hakinden, Tohu, Hakinibun. This immediately I'm looks to me like... Well, dumb. It looks dumb. Yeah. Because of the... It's based, clearly a fighting show. Based on the character designs alone, I'm assuming this is dumb. This is a, fi- a supernatural fighting show it reminds me of you haka show because the uniform the guy's wearing only it's not blue and that's pretty much all i got there confucianism bushido and buddhist philosophy dogs yep. whatever character designs alone make it look dumb okay cuticle detective inaba what? the story revolves around a private detective okay this you know might, what? This, this looks, looks to good. me you haven't read bakuman have you rim i actually have not yet in bakuman there's a manga they make which is called uh pcp perfect crime party and this guy looks like sort of the he's got the pose of the main character Scott, from perfect that guy crime is party. a private detective who's part wolf human created artificially runs a detective agency this looks like a supernatural secretary yeah this is a supernatural version of Perfect Crime Party. Uh, that is a the manga mastermind of the manga. Don Valentino gang is a g- literal goat who steals money to eat it. Yeah, this is just r- kind of ridiculous. This and could also be ridiculous in the way that uh, Dura was. Well, this is looks to me more like Excel that pose Saga. This is, me. this is Excel eh. Saga plus Detective Conan in one. I'll bet it's more. Excel Saga crossed with Durara. Uh, well, anyway. Just based on the cast of characters, or maybe, maybe, but I'm stretching, it's those two things with a dash, just a little dash of Pet Shop of Horrors, but I doubt that. Anyway, next. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this looks like the kind of garbage you'd see on, like, those, like, C-level animated shorts that you see on Netflix, like, all at once. GDGD Fairies, second edition. Oh, it says second season, but it said it says episode zero only. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't watch this unless someone said it this was This is good. one of those short throwaway in between okay, commercials. Okay, but this next show. This is, I, I got the next one. We're alternating. I, I would watch this based solely on that picture. Ishida to Asakura. The Wherever story is, centers around the friendship of high school boys. The co-lead Asakura wants to become a teacher at a girls' school in the future. So there's a little bit of perversion there, but... While he want, while Ishida wants to become a florist with Asakura in the future, this looks to me like it's definitely in the Cromarty character. I was gonna say this because is you got the guy is picking his nose with a fucking pencil, but he's making that thoughtful face. He's like, hmm. This is like friggin' uh, oh my god! What's, uh, uh, <laughs> wait a minute, we're not watching a lot of anime yet. We want to watch like five of these shows. Yeah, you think these shows are going to be fan-subbed or available? They might be. Hey, good luck. I'll watch this show. Yeah, this show <laughs> is definitely a, a, ga- a gag show, Gog Manga Biori plus Space Brothers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cromarty, uh, anyway. Tamako Market. Okay. Story based, not based on pre-existing material. The Khmer blah, 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 blah. Doesn't tell me shit about it. It's made by people who made k and Bakuman, and I guess it's about a girl who works in a market, so it could All be... All right, so based on that information alone and this picture, I'll bet this show is one of those cute, pretty good shows that I'll watch on Crunchyroll whenever I'm bored looking for an anime to watch. Maybe. It depends on how much it focuses on the market versus how if much it goes elsewhere. If this show is totally like this girl running a market, I think I'll like it the same way I like Polar Bear Cafe, but for different reasons. Mm, could be. 
Oh, I kind of know about this next show, right. but you can introduce it. Oh, good, because I don't know anything. My O U <laughs> Mao Yu Mao Yusha. In I a watched world the trailer. Embroiled by war between humans and demons, the human's greatest hero. This looks to me like a supernatural battling show, but because the people are tall, I have a feeling it might be <laughs> leaning towards the uh, last exile sort of battling as opposed to now, the Naruto kind of battling. While it has big boobs... Uh, if you're looking at this with us right now, look at those big boobs. Mm-hmm. And then They're not scroll- as big as the other ones. No, no. And the shape, the shape is and different. And look at the boobs on DC3 Da Capo 3. Yeah, it's the shape is different. Yes. These boobs are big, but they're at least shaped almost like an actually large breast would be shaped. Maybe. Which means that it's not a deal breaker that there are large boobs, when normally that is a deal breaker in anime pictures. Yeah. But I watched the trailer for this. You know what the deal is? Mm-hmm. Great hero, demon lord. Demon Lord's actually a really beautiful woman, Mm -hmm. but she's a demon lord. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to kill her, and she's like, why don't we team up? And he's like, I don't think I should team up with you. I don't know. I think that, if anything, we we can agree on one thing. This is a show that our friend Katsu will love the shit out of, no matter what it's about. Based on the description you just gave me, it's giving me a Scrap Princess feel. Yeah, maybe maybe like take Last Exile, back it up a little bit, Mm. push it more in the Scrap Princess direction, but it's definitely got an element of uh, Spice and Wolf. I was about to say Spice and Wolf. Yeah. Which could be good or bad, because Spice and Wolf had a lot of potential, but it focused on everything I didn't care about. Okay. Ganbare Lulu Lolo. This looks like a kid's show. Like it is based on a picture book. It is for a cop territory. <laughs> uh, I can watch an episode or two and go, yay, and that's it. Kotorasan. Uh, it just looks conan This looks like a cute, dumbed-down version of... Of um, someone joins the ESP club. What the hell is that thing? You're not thinking of Maho Sky Tire, no, are you? No, no, no. Because that shows like B plus, A minus. No, what the hell is the name of that thing? I don't know what you're talking about. It's that manga Dark Horse puts out. Oh my god, which why... one? Oh, why can't I think of the name of it it's right now? It's not Oh My Goddess. No, it's oh, what the hell is it? What are you talking about? <laughs> Why can't I remember this right now? It's by the same guy who did MPD Psycho? Or no, was it? What? Oh, what the hell is I it? don't know what you're talking about. Based on the picture alone, it's a show that I just wouldn't even really pay attention to unless someone told me to watch it, but I don't see anything outright objectionable because while it seems to have some Moe elements, it's also got that weird guy in the bottom right that leads me to believe it's not the kind of show you might otherwise think it is, but I got nothing to go on. Amnesia, however, let's see. Oh, it's based on a game, so it's guaranteed to be bad. But it gives me the slightest hint of a Monte Cristo vibe just because it's got some interesting styling going on. Yeah, but, the styling on those playing cards. Is but I've me... seen many shows that had similar styling. I'm going to guess this is a shitty fighting show mm-hmm. based solely on what I just looked at. Yeah, she meets her apparent boyfriend despite not knowing his face, right? That, again, gives you that uh, Eden of the East idea. Yep, but, but because it's boyfriend, I'm beginning to think it's more in the perverted direction. But based on a game, I'm going to say it's not actually perverted. It's a shitty fighting show. Could be. All right. Yama no Susume. The story is about two childhood friends. Uh, one has acrophobia. The other one loves mountains. So it's a buddy opposite show that looks somewhat cute. You know, it looks like they're, they're, I get they're a wearing... Ne- a- I'm getting a Neon under 7 vibe looking at the character design. One kid's got a map and looks like they're ready to go climb a mountain, so... Yeah, it's like, you know, uh, it could be like it was just Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash and no one else. Okay. So for those of you who aren't looking at the pictures, I'm going to say the title of the next one because based on the title, I, this might be a very different show. Man Girl! <laughs> <laughs> I think 4chan has a whole board dedicated to that show. Yeah, no, it's not actually about anything to do with gender. It has to do with manga and the word girl combined as someone who doesn't know English came up with this title and it's two girls trying to make a manga and it's basically the cute younger girl version of It could Bakuman, be cute. And it I'm probably worried, has. Though. It I'm probably worried. has less of the Bakuman learn about the industry stuff and more the hair, two cute girls. The hair, face, and character design of the upper right girl looks too much like all the scary incest moe shows I've seen where I'm dubious. Yeah, why you're supposed to be a manga editor, but you have a teddy bear and you're wearing a cute night Because they're dress. not manga editors. They want to be. Okay. 
Uh, we only got four left here. Vivid Red Operation, the uh. heroine of a girl science fiction action anime. So, you know, looking at it, it looks like it might have a serious science fiction kind of plot it's going on. It's set in a peaceful world where science has solved all problems. Right, you know, but, you know, the way the girl is designed, uh, basically, okay, I, I learned something. no pants, uh, the also, no pants character uh, design. Scott, directed by Kazuhiro Takamura. Strike Witches. Strike Witches. That tells you where this is going, right? <laughs> Next. I mean, it feels, though, based on this picture and description, like it's going to have a little bit more of serious sci-fi than Strike Witches, while also still being Strike Witches. She's not wearing pants. I'm saying she says no pants. <laughs> Love Live, School Idol Project. Do we even need to say anything else? It nah. looks like School Long Live, School Idol Project. Okay, this next one doesn't have a picture, but it should. Okay. Train Hero. The story of Train Hero deals with a rescue team that handles disasters and the high-speed trains crisscrossing the world, undergoes transformation sequences. So it's I, basically I know what I want it's this show probably to probably going to be. What's that already existing train show? Oh, no, 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 no. I know what I want this show to be, but it's not going to be that. This is going to be fucking X-Driver. It's going to be garbage. Oh. It's a show that you might, if you haven't watched X-Driver and been tricked by it, you might watch this thinking, oh, my God, trains, this is awesome. And then five episodes in, you're like, wait a minute. This show actually sucks. Mm. Same thing that happened. You know, you can be tricked. Like, Noir tricked me with music, but it was shitty. Uh, Hexine tricked me with music, but it was shitty. This is going to trick you with trains, but it's This is going to trick me with trains, just like X-Driver tricked me with, oh my god, his character designs, but nothing else going for it. All right, the final one. Doki Doki Precure, the 10th TV series for Precure. It's Precure. <laughs> the end. Da, 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 na, <laughs> na, 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 na. We're not going to do the OAVs in the movies, but I just want to say the best thing on this Even whole page. Even though the first one there is St. oni song. Which is the best thing on this entire page. Oh my God, I'm going to watch all of that no matter what as it comes out. If you don't know, St. oni san is basically the story <gasps> of Jesus and Buddha are share a low-rent apartment in Tokyo. That's the you couldn't sum it up any better than that. It's a long running manga. So Scott, that it's Senyu, awesome. that Senyu, the one from above that was kind of fantasy that we worried might be Rave Master. Look at that other picture from it of the girl with the little uh, horns and her straight jacket, long sleeves. Oh, and the little skull guy. I see this now. The problem is I've never seen an anime that had characters as awesome as that. That was good, mm. but that character looks awesome. <laughs> I like just the, because I like the little... guy's eating popcorn, it looks like Gowry. Yep, and the skull thing just reminds me a little bit of Zarmal Gooster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> also, note, OAV, Mobile Suit Gundam, 8th MS Team, Blu-ray Disc Memorial Box. Can't go wrong there. Oh, there's One Piece Film Z coming. Z? There, that's a, the 26th one? I guess. <laughs> Uh, is there anything? I'm just not going to go over all these. Just looking around quickly. Oh, that Kaiketsu Zozori da 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 Daibokun actually looks pretty great. Okay. Look at that. Look at that Which, rabbit girl and that fox it? guy. Movies. Third one from the oh, left. Oh, that one. Look yeah, at that. That looks like a kid's anime movie that's going to be pretty good. Kid's anime movies tend to be awesome. Yeah. Or really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Berserk Ogan is that related to Berserk Berserk because it looks like something that might be who knows Studio 4C oh you know that's a winner yeah. of course okay good <laughs> we got something from the sun going on here and I think that's enough of that so, so. Uh, that's what you may have to look forward to in the fu near future of anime based completely on guessing a handful of JPEGs and a handful of unreliable paragraphs if any of you tell us to watch one of these enough and we can, we'll yeah, review it. And also, we should come back to this or someone else should come back to this after all these shows are out. Listen to this episode and then see how close our guessing came to the truth. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. <laughs>